What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I'm the Renegade JJ Williams, and today I'm going to be discussing from 2017 Marshall, starring Chadwick Boseman, Josh Gad, Kate Hudson, Dan Stevens, James Cromwell, Sterling K. Brown, and in minor roles, Juicy Smollett and Rosanda Chili Thomas. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me once again today here on an all-new episode of Renegades Reviews. Our film takes place today beginning in April of 1941, and Thurgood Marshall is an NAACP lawyer who travels the country defending people of color who are wrongfully accused of crime due to racial prejudice. And upon returning to his New York office after successfully trying a case in Oklahoma, he is sent to Bridgeport, Connecticut to defend Joseph Spell, Joseph Spell who is a chauffeur for John and Eleanor Strubing. And Joseph is accused of raping Eleanor. Meanwhile, in Bridgeport, Sam Friedman is assigned by his brother, Irwin, to get Marshall admitted to the local bar there. And during the preliminary hearing, Judge Foster, who just happens to be a friend of the father of the lead prosecutor named Lauren, Lauren Wells, is assigned the case. He agrees to admit Marshall to the bar, but he forbids him to speak during the trial, stating that he will hold him in contempt of court if he does. This forces Sam to be the lead counsel, even though he's only an insurance attorney, and he's never tried anything like this before. So Thurgood must now coach Sam through notes and during briefings during recesses. An example of which is when he tells Sam to allow a white Southern woman onto the jury because of her assertive nature when they were questioning her. During Marshall and Friedman's initial interview with Mr. Spill, Joe swears that he has never had any sexual contact with Eleanor. He gives his attorneys information on how to find the officer who had pulled him over around the time of the crime, who saw that there was nobody else in the car with him. Now, Eleanor claims that she was tied up, gagged in the back of the car. So why didn't the officer see or hear her? During one of the scenes during the trial, they gag Sam Friedman, and he proves that he could still scream for help with the gag on. She also claims that Mr. Spell threw her off a bridge into the water below. Now, on one side of the bridge are sharp, rigid rocks and rapids. Now, on the other side of the bridge are calm, still waters. So if Mr. Spell was trying to kill her, why would he throw her into the side of the bridge with the calm waters? Why not throw her off the side of the bridge with the sharp rocks and the rapids that would whisk her away? The attorneys decide to offer a plea, guard, a plea bargain to Joe. 20 years in jail instead of life. Joseph is interested in this deal because he doesn't feel he's going to get a fair trial as a black man. But Thurgood talks him out of it. A couple days later at the trial, prosecution brings a doctor onto the stand. And the doctor states that upon examining Eleanor, he found bruises on her as well as skin underneath her fingernails. Skin 
of a black male. And when Eleanor takes the stand, she testifies to being tied up in the back of the car, gagged when the police officer pulls them over, armed with this new information, Marshall and Friedman decide to confront Joseph, who admits to them that he lied about not having sexual contact with her, but he swears that it was all consensual. When Mr. Spell gets his turn on the stand, he testifies that Eleanor's husband, John Strubing, is the one responsible for giving her the bruises through repeated acts of spousal abuse. And that on the evening in question in particular, he had gone to Eleanor to ask him, ask her for a pay advance because he needed to pay off a debt that he had owed. Eleanor be gave him the money and then she began to make a move on him. Mr. Spell being a red-blooded American man, receives the advancements. You know, he consents to Eleanor and her desires. The two of them have sex multiple times. After the last time, Eleanor begins to panic. And she's going on and on about the possibility of being pregnant, about being found out. So she wants to know if she's pregnant. Mr. Spell drives Eleanor to take her to a doctor. This is where the car gets pulled over. Eleanor hides in the back seat so that she won't be caught with him. and Joseph is getting questioned by the officer. Once the officer lets them go, Joseph continues his mission to get Eleanor to the hospital. Eleanor, in hysterics, forces Joseph to pull over and attempts to run off. Joseph tries to grab her, and that's when she scratches him and gets the skin under the nails. She jumps out off the bridge into the calm waters. And Eleanor, being a former swimmer, swims herself to safety. She then runs down to the highway and flags down a motorist and begins to make up this tale about being raped. When Prosecutor Willis asks Joseph, why didn't he tell the truth in the beginning? Joseph tells him that where he's from in Louisiana, black men get tortured and lynched for having sex with white women. Mr. Willis tries to make an, an objection to this, and the judge allows the testimony to stand. Before the closing arguments are given, Thurgood Marshall gets reassigned to another case in Mississippi. So he has to leave. The plaintiff, the prosecution, desperate to put Joseph away, offers one final plea deal, five years. Sam and Joseph discuss it, and Joseph de decides that he's going to turn it down because that's what Thurgood Marshall would want. The night before Marshall leaves, him and Sam have dinner together, and Thurgood helps Sam with what will be his closing statements, laying out for him everything he needs to say and address to make sure that they win this case. 
Closing arguments are given. The jury goes to deliberate. When they return, the judge asks for the foreman to stand up and read the verdict. Except it's not a foreman. It's a forewoman. The exact same Southern white woman that Marshall told Friedman to allow onto the case, onto the jury, is now the forewoman for the jury. She delivers an odd guilty verdict, making Joseph a free man. When Thurgood calls Sam to find out how the case went, Sam gives him the good news as Marshall moves on to his new case in Mississippi. Prior to the credits, we are told that Sam Friedman, who again had only ever been an insurance attorney, never really done criminal or civil law like this, went on to work many civil rights cases after this one, while Thurgood Marshall himself went on to have an illustrious career as one of the civil rights movement's principal legal strategists, and then became the first African-American justice of the Supreme Court of the United States of America. I knew about Thurgood Marshall from my Black history class that I discussed yesterday when I talked a little bit about Roots. I knew that he was the first African-American Supreme Court justice. But I had no idea really of anything else about Thurgood Marshall's history. I don't know if it was the presentation of the movie or the performances by the primary cast, specifically Chadwick Boseman, Josh Gad, and Dan Stevens. But I was captivated by this film. I think of a lot of it has to do with the cast because Dan Stevens, I've spoken about on this channel and on the Jeff Meacham Network a few times about over the last year. Um, his portrayal of the Beast in the live action Beauty and the Beast, his portrayal of Charles Dickens in The Man Who Invented Christmas. And now here he is as the lead prosecutor and marshal. Josh Gad, for God's sakes, the voice of Olaf, the lovable snowman from Frozen. Yes, I know him from other stuff as well. I haven't gotten into any of those movies yet here on the network, but I will in time. Films like 21, alongside of Kevin Spacey, Lawrence Fishburne, Pixels, alongside Adam Sandler. Both films that I'm sure I'll be getting to at some point down the road. But I just love Josh Gad. And then Chadwick Boseman. I mean, the, the man was Black Panther. T'Challa, and then we lost him last year. This was a very, very good performance by him. Very captivating. He definitely commands the screen when he is on there. I am going to give Marshall Four out of five stars. Like I said, I really enjoyed this movie. I had never seen it prior. I knew very little about Thurgood Marshall going in. And I feel like this film did a great job to teach me more about him to the point where I now want to do due diligence, and read up on him a little bit and learn maybe a little bit more even about him. 
make sure you get out there. Get those hashtags trending on social media. Hashtag Casa D18 Studios. Hashtag Renegades Reviews. Hashtag Renegade Returns. And, of course, the ever-popular hashtag Shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about... Merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade J.J. Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Stat Boy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. Don't forget to get out there. Do what the commercial said. Support the Jeff Meacham Network on Teespring, teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network. Get you yourself your Renegade J.J. Williams shirt, your Dad's Not Always on Wrestling shirt, your Stat Boy Sports Bar shirt, your shirts for Meachamania, Talk Wrestling, and, of course, the official shirt for the Jeff Meacham Network itself. Tomorrow, make sure you tune in right here on an all-new episode of Renegades Reviews, exclusively on the Casa D18 Studios channel where I will be discussing from 2009 Notorious, starring Jamal Woolard, Angela Bassett, Derek Luke, Anthony Mackie, Antonique Smith, and Naturi Naughton, as we begin five days of black music here on our celebration of Black History Month. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Make sure you leave your comments in the comment box below. Let me know what you thought about the reviews. I appreciate those of you who have been leaving comments here lately. Thank you, I salute you. I really appreciate your guys' feedback. Once again, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time.